Hello and welcome to The Creative Entrepreneur. Today we're going to be talking about building networks and relationships. Nope, I'm not talking about the X. Stay tuned. Coming to you from San Antonio, Texas. Welcome to The Creative Entrepreneur, a podcast created to help entrepreneurs build their business. Branding, marketing, analytics, positioning, and lead generation. Plus, interviews with other business owners to learn from their successes and failures. Now, here is your host, Abel Garza. Hey guys, welcome back to The Creative Entrepreneur. I'm really excited about today because I get to pick the brain of one of the leading photographers here in San Antonio that focuses on one of my favorite themes, cosplay. And I really want to know how he gets his leads and how he has built his business utilizing social media. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce Mr. Daniel Grove. How are you doing today? Doing great. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. It's a real honor. Man, the honor is all mine. Believe me, I've been following you for some time. I'm a huge fan. And you focus on a theme which I love to shoot because you get to get as creative as you want, which is cosplay. And I'm not talking about me dressing up as Batman. (laughs) I've gotten together with some of the models here in San Antonio and some of the makeup artists, and we've just come together and built something. It's so much fun. I love it. I understand that you're putting together some educational videos for other entrepreneurs. What is some good advice that you could give our listeners? Well, uh, I mean, for photographers specifically, um, I just kind of have a few tips for photographers and then just entrepreneurs in general. So first for photographers, I would say, learn Photoshop. It's not really not that hard. (laughs) People get scared of it. They run away from it. They don't learn it and they suffer. So uh, for photographers out there, I'd say learn Photoshop, plan your photo shoots, do something new, do something unique that, you know, is going to make you stand out. And that kind of carries over. And that kind of carries over to the entrepreneurial side of things is find a way to set yourself apart from the competition um, and stand out. You know, Um, also, I would say hire someone like a photographer, a videographer, not trying to plug myself for this, but uh, this is an important this is an important bit of uh, establishing your brand is hire professionals to get great images of your product or of you. I don't know what, you know, what kind of service or product might be offered, but uh, get good content for social media, good video of you, good pictures of your stuff, uh, maybe pictures or videos of you doing your service, whatever that is. Get high quality stuff. Don't just rely on your cell phone for everything. Um, and, uh, you know, make yourself look good. <laughs> that's, that's important. Image is almost everything. And in the social media world, it is really important. Um, and then that kind of just to, just to finish up that idea is you want to establish a really good online presence for yourself and uh, also find where your clients are. You know, your ideal client, where are they in town? What are they doing? What do they love? You want to be there, maybe physically, maybe not so much physically, maybe just with your presence or your, you know, hashtags or posting in those groups, things like that. You want to be where your clients are so that they can find you easier. That That's yeah. absolutely phenomenal information. Uh, Daniel, so... I, I see that you know your 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 presence is is known on social media, and you set you say set yourself apart. Um, are those certain techniques that you utilize personally that do set you? Because I know that there's all kinds of photography out there, and the type of photography oh, yeah. that you choose is all yours. But I guess to separate mm-hmm. yourself and distinguish yourself as a photographer in a unique way other than people just using their iPhones, how do you separate yourself? (laughs) Myself personally? Like, what do I do? Uh, Well, for my style, uh, no, I do all kinds of photography as well. I do weddings, families. I do, you know, what I call the quote-unquote normal stuff. But my specialty, what has set me apart and what I love doing, you know, my passion is cosplay, special effects, uh, you know, themed photo shoots, uh, styled photo shoots, whatever you want to call it. There's a bunch of different, you know, ways to classify it. Uh, th- that's what I do. That has really set me apart. And I put a lot of, you know, planning and creativity and thought into these photo shoots before I even get my camera and walk out the door. I've already got hours of planning and thought uh, put into the shoots. In most cases, some, some, you know, not so much. But um, for most cases, my most successful shoots and the ones that I'm most proud of are uh, that way because I put a lot of planning and, you know, very uh, purposeful, you know. I know exactly, what you're, I know exactly what you're saying. In fact, when I write stuff down <laughs> and have a plan, I find that the shoot goes much better. 
it's 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 great to plan ahead. I, oh yeah, I can, I can attest to that. So, can you give me? And mm-hmm. I know we're all about building business, but I would like to know what is your worst entrepreneurial moment. <laughs> Yeah, so thankfully I haven't had a bunch of like train wrecks or, you know, like big, like I've never been sued. You know, I haven't had any like big bad moments in my business history. Uh, but one that did come to mind was I made a bad investment in advertising at one time. Uh, it was actually about a year or two ago. I was contacted by a local golf course here in San Antonio. And uh, they had a bunch of other golf courses underneath them. And they said, hey, we're doing this, you know, big gala thing. Uh, If you pay this much hundreds of dollars, we'll put your business name and logo on, you know, all these different tees. So that all these, you know, in my mind, rich golfing people will see my name and hire me. Uh, And the way that they worded it and the way that I was thinking at the time, I was like, this is a bit of a risk. I mean, every advertising is. But I thought I'm going to go for it. I think I think it's going to turn around. You know, I'll get some leads this way. Nothing happened. I spent seven hundred dollars for the first go, and then uh, they gave me this great deal. The next time around, I spent I think three hundred dollars to do like a second year. <laughs> Nothing came out of that. A thousand dollars. I totally get gone. that, man. You know what? That's <laughs> happened to me plenty uh, of times where I'm anticipating certain <laughs> certain outcome, and then you go in and you're you're ready to go, mm-hmm. and it just doesn't come out the way you wanted. But I think that's that's part of pivoting as an yeah. entrepreneur, understanding where you're going you know, how to approach things. Now that you have this experience, you're probably less likely to commit certain acts that will hinder your (laughs) bottom line. And so another thing that I wanted to know is, is um, many, many entrepreneurs, they are put into situations that dictate who they are, their personality, the way they shoot, uh, even in life to help them persevere and do things differently. Has there been a moment in your career, Mm -hmm. in your life, that has just been an aha moment? Something that has completely changed the way you look at things? Yeah, there's been a few. And, you know, photography as a career is one that kind of evolves as you grow, not only just getting better with your taking of your pictures, but the more you learn about business, you know, you're reaching different clients. It's one of those things that just every like two years, you're kind of hitting some kind of turning point, hopefully. (laughs) Uh, I mean, in some cases you are. So for me, two big moments was one, uh, about mid last year, uh, I realized after doing photography for 14 years, I started when I was 15, I'm 30 right now. So this is my 15th year of doing photography, which is crazy, half my life. Uh, But last year, for year 14, I just kind of got to thinking like, I just had like zoomed out, you know, like I turned into a, a, a Google image satellite and I said okay what's the big picture with my my legacy what am I doing with my pictures and you know uh, my big question was well one of my questions was are my clients still enjoying the photos that I've taken for them and then conversely do they even have the photos I've taken for them you know they're all digital photos like that was my product for years and years was all digital photos because I thought that was the greatest thing because everyone lives in a digital world everyone's on computers and on phones so why not give them their images in a way that they can enjoy and you know more easily get so in my mind at the time that was digital files Uh, but the unfortunate, you know, answer to those two questions was pretty much people aren't enjoying my photos anymore. Um, and half of them have probably lost the photos for a variety of reasons, you know, replacing devices, uh, uh, having viruses, getting corrupted hard drives, just forgetting about stuff. Where did I put that folder five years ago? Who knows? (laughs) And that a big, my big aha moment was realizing that I need to step up my game in that I need to offer my photos in a way that will last because this digital stuff is just not going to last. Where are our files right now going to be in 20 years or 50 years? We're not going to have any of this stuff. And I know you, a lot of you people are out there. And I know a lot of people will say, oh, well, there's cloud backups, you know, uh, the hard drives are getting cheaper, and that's true. But at the same time, because we live in this digital age, I feel like it's just like an ocean of files, and it's just kind of diluting the value of a file. Even if that file is an amazing professional photo that I edited for five hours, it's still in the sea of other files. And, um, yeah, so all that to say, my solution to that is now uh, my primary product is not digital files. My primary product is physical printed art for people's homes, for their business place. And that's a big turnaround that I, I started late last year. 
and I'm still, you know, learning that new business model. It's called IPS or in-person sales. I'm still learning it, still rapid changing my mindsets because it's a lot about mindset, a lot of perspective stuff going on that I had to really work through. And, uh, yeah, so that was, wow. that's one of my big aha I mean, moments. Prince, you know, <laughs> still going through it. <laughs> who would have thought, right? No. Well, you know what? Uh, I, I do get a lot yeah. of requests for prints, but I never really focused on that. It's all digital. Everything is digital nowadays. So, you know, how many files can you mm-hmm. give me? How many now it's a, like, it's, it, it's gone from, <laughs> okay, I'll give you five photos or 10 photos. And now they're looking for people yeah, to give them photos, 100, yeah. 200 photos. Uh, <laughs> and it's just not, it oh. can't be like that as a professional photographer. No, I guess you know it. that it takes a while, a while to edit photos and, and get them out there. But, um, you yeah. know, print, it's just a, and I know a lot of other photographers and that's what, that's almost a given. That's what they do. They, as soon as they do that, that shoot, they're mm-hmm. like, okay, which ones are we going to order? Which ones are we going to put that way? They can have that lasting memory of that. Uh, a good, yeah. I guess I would like to understand what your, you know, your daily routine. I see you, you go online. I see, you know, you start posting. I almost see it immediately when you start posting, but uh, I'd like to know. <laughs> wow. The algorithm, <laughs> your algorithm's actually working. <laughs> uh, what is your routine? Like your daily routine, other than, other than shooting photography, uh, you know, you get up in the morning, what do you do? You go to the gym, you hit the ground running. What is it that you do on a regular basis that, that you find that has been successful for you? Yeah. Well, on a good week, uh, <laughs> on a good week, I will actually plan my social media posts ahead of time. And I use later.com. This is a free serve. Well, I'm using the free account, which is still pretty great. And I'm able to schedule all my Instagram and Facebook posts. I could even schedule Pinterest if I want to get fancy. And, um, I, yeah, I schedule my whole week out ahead of time. I do, I try to do one, maybe two posts a day. I don't want to overdo it. So usually one a day is pretty safe. And I'll alternate between an evening post and a morning post. Um, so that could happen, you know, Sunday night, Monday morning, I'll schedule my whole week's worth of posting and I just let it roll and that's easy. It's a set it, forget it kind of thing. Um, other things throughout the week is I will get on, I mean, I'm, I'm usually you doing my work on my laptop at night. My wife is watching her shows. My kids are finally asleep and around 10 PM I get to sit down on my couch next to my wife and just go to town, uh, editing or marketing or networking, um, I'm a real relational kind of guy. I love making friends and just talking with people. I try not to sound like a creepy nosy person, but sometimes I'll just write someone and be like, Hey, how's your weight going? You know, like, let's talk. Is there anything interesting going on? And it's not for the sole purpose of like leading to a, Hey, you want to hire me for a photo shoot kind of conversation. It's not about that. Uh, I just like to hear people's stories. And, um, and so I like to talk with people online, keep up relationships with models and potential clients or past clients, things like that. Uh, and that's turned around really well for me. Um, any, any type of lead I get, I try to track them down, uh, again, without being overbearing, but making sure that I contact them really quick. I've got a lot of people that are impressed with my response speed and and that helps, you know, like I've heard the opposite from other people hiring other photographers where they say, yeah, I wrote them and they didn't get back to me until a week, a week later. I'm thinking, (laughs) what are they doing all week? Like, sheesh, (laughs) that's terrible. So I try to do the opposite. Um, yeah, a lot of networking and editing. And if I don't have anything to edit, then I'm learning. Uh, I'm challenging myself, watching tutorials, you know, taking some kind of online course, something to just up my game. That's, that's while awesome. Downtime. That's awesome you say that because I'm doing almost the exact same thing with the exception of the uh, uh, the <laughs> social media. I mean, this this uh, planmedia.com mm-hmm. is that what you you're using? Later, later, uh, later, oh, uh, later.com. Yeah, just later. Yep. With a free account allows you to have 30 posts, um, for each social media account. So like I have my Facebook and my Instagram on there, so I can do 30 posts a month on my Facebook and 30 yeah, on my Instagram per awesome. month, which is, you know, one a day. So any- Pretty great. You, you can't do video or multi-photo, oh, but you can yeah. do single okay. photo posts, oh, which sense. is deep. You know, um, one of the things that you mentioned were, uh, you're networking a lot and you're talking to a lot of people and what some of the entrepreneurs that I've yeah. spoke with say, forget about the money. Don't worry about the money. Utilize your resources, get your resources down, do the networking, and then the money will come. And you just said that, which is crazy because uh, Mm. when you're focused on your resources and you're looking at networking with other people and getting to know other people and, and again, what it is that they've done for the day, then that money 
will come or those clients will come or the leads yeah. will come and your expediency, the way you return, that is Im- just, that is very important. I've, I've gotten a lead before and called them almost immediately and they're like, Oh my gosh, that is so fast. I can't believe it. You know, <laughs> everybody else that I've, I've contacted, you know, they take, a, real they take like a day or two to get back with me and you got, you got me right away. So that is super important. Getting that lead, get the, or, or even somebody who's interested in your, in your product or your service and then getting back with them ASAP. That is super important. So, totally. uh, mm-hmm. People usually, when they when they start a business, it, they're reluctant. They want to get everything right. Everything needs to be perfect before they get started. They need that <laughs> letterhead to be perfect. The business card needs to be perfect. The website needs to be perfect. And they hesitate in getting started. What recommendation would you, I understand that, you know, mm. you just need to get started sometimes. And you need to have some preparation. You know, you can't just throw yourself in without, yeah. you know, knowing every, you know, there needs to be some preparation, but you don't, <laughs> don't have be to dumb. be a perfectionist <laughs> is what I'm saying to become an entrepreneur in, in the beginning. Was there anything that was holding you back? There really wasn't. And I'm not trying to say I'm like, you know, perfect, but just my personality type and the way that I went into photography in college, um, there wasn't really anything like holding me back necessarily. Uh, I struggle with the pricing structure for my photography, which every photographer does. It's always like the biggest thing is how do I price myself? What's too much? What's too little? Um, so, I mean, I, I, I worked my way through that actually in an interesting way, but there wasn't anything that really held me back. As soon as I realized my photos were getting decent and I was getting better, like every month, my photos were getting a little bit better. I was like, all right, I need to start charging, you know, start charging something. And I knew at that time I was going to charge more in the future, but I needed to try to start charging something like immediately. And, and I did that. And I, you know, I worked through the different, progressions of growing and changing my numbers and things like that but absolutely absolutely you know a lot of the photog- especially aspiring photographers they don't they don't really know how to price right their photography mm-hmm. uh, sometimes i say it saturates the market somewhat but you know if you have that quality product they're going to seek you out yeah they're going to come out and seek you out because uh, you have a photographer that says i'll do it for 25 dollars, and then <laughs> i'll give you 200 photos Something is not right. Yeah. Or at least most people will see through that. Mm-hmm. And uh, also, even if you're overcharging and you see that the quality is not there. Yeah. And you're just like, there's, not, there's something that's not right. There. Yeah. So, one, one of my things was I wanted my work to be so good that people would pay anything for it. Like I wanted people to see my portfolio and, and even if they were low budget, single mom, didn't have, you know, a lot of money, I wanted them to say, I've got to have Daniel Grove. Like, I don't care. I'm going to save up for a year. I'm going to do payment plans. Uh, God forbid a credit card. <laughs> don't do that. Um, but <laughs> I don't take credit cards, by the way. Uh, but I just wanted people to say, I got to have Daniel Grove photography is the only option for the photos that I want. And um You know, I'm still working my way there. And you mentioned photographers not knowing how to price themselves. After 14 years of doing this, I feel like I just started to learn how to finally price myself last last year. Uh, You know, really pricing myself for a career. Not like a hobby that makes me a few hundred bucks here and there, but like I need to take my expenses into account. I need to charge enough for taxes coming out. Uh, You know, investing back into my equipment, you know, per year, just all those other things. I'm really just totally changing everything about how I charge and why. Absolutely. And, you know, that is super important, especially if you're building that business. Yeah. You need to be able to price price it appropriately. Mm-hmm. And it, I think it was only really only uh, about a year ago when I actually said, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to price this a certain way. And that's going to be the bottom line. But I, I see a lot of especially photographers, because a lot of photographers will come to me and be like, how much do I charge or what do I do? And, you know, I don't have a lot of money. And they say I've been charging, you know, thirty five dollars <laughs> for one session and, and, you're, and, and I'm, I'm booked, but. I'm not making any money. Well, no, because for one, all your time is going into shooting and editing and $35 is just not enough to live off of. And so, uh, you know, putting on all that time and effort, you need to charge appropriately, but also Mm -hmm. you need to have, make sure that your quality is there. Oh yeah. If you could just share some of the resources that you utilize maybe, uh, to, 
present your photography, what is your primary means of obtaining leads? My main way that I get leads and customers is really through word of mouth. Uh, now when that carries into the social media world, that means tagging and, you know, met someone sending their friend to me and they go to my website, then they send me an email. So it's mostly through Facebook connections. And that's probably partially as a result of my networking and, you know, just talking with people, being nice with people, uh, making friends online. Um, but yeah, social media, word of mouth, uh, very rarely do I get someone to just found me on Google. It's almost always through some Facebook post on a group, on a city group. Uh, you know, a friend of a friend liked it and popped up in their feed, something like that. So, and is that one of the ways that you were able to hone in on your your niche market? Yeah, it is actually. So the way that I target my niche market for cosplay and for like the characters and you know uh, the nerdy stuff that I shoot is through Facebook groups. So um, I know that you know, like I said earlier, you need to find where your ideal client is. Well, for this type of photography, not my families or weddings, but for this, you know, nerdy cosplay stuff, my ideal client is going to conventions. They're at Alamo City Comic Con. They're at San Japan. They're at Pack South. These really big, huge, you know, 10, 20, 30,000 people events downtown San Antonio. That's where they are. But online, they're on the Facebook groups for those events. So that's where I go. So I post, uh, within the rules and, you know, within just not over flooding it with my stuff, I post in those Facebook groups for those events and more generic ones, just like Texas cosplayers, you know, or cosplayers of San Antonio, just very generic open-ended groups. I'll post in there and I'll interact with people and make friends and they see me, they trust me. Uh, and I've got return customers every year that it, they always hire me to photograph them at these events. So, uh, yeah, Facebook groups have been a really, um, an unsung hero in some of my marketing. Are you utilizing any type of software to get your get your appointments scheduled? Do you have something that schedules them automatically? Is there anything like that that you're using right now to to facilitate your your the the workflow of your business? No, I'm not actually. Uh, I I definitely could. I know there's a lot of really good scheduling services out there. I'm not utilizing right now. When they pay me for their time slot at a shoot at an event, then I write it down in my Evernote for that event, and that's that. Like I I just kind of do it myself right now. Uh, but uh, if I find a good option, you know, that's affordable or free, I might move to that. But for now, what I've got going works pretty good. Yeah, less overhead. Yeah. And paper, to, <laughs> paper and pen work really well. Uh, you don't have to have everything perfect <laughs> before you start. I want to go back to your networking. And uh, I know, you know, you've been, we've been talking about social media. Do you attend any kind of events, like major events, other than the, the cosplay type of events that you may go to? Do you go to like the weddings or the uh, you know, engagement or any kind of events? And, and if you do, how often do you go? Like the bridal expos and things like that? Or right, what yeah, events? correct. I don't know. I don't really attend any local events like that. Um, you know, I, I know that some photographers buy a booth at the Bridal Expo and things like that. And there's probably 75 others photographers there doing the same thing. Um, so I don't have the uh, I, I don't have the freed up money right now to purchase one of those booths. And I don't know if I want to. Um, I don't know if that would be a, a worthwhile investment for me right now. So, no, it's really just an, on the online forum, you know, where I'm, I'm finding people on Facebook. And, and some on Instagram as well. Yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, areas in which uh, I personally have have found uh, leads is is going to events, not necessarily for weddings or uh, cosplay or anything like that, but just events in general mm -hmm. where other people are gathering for uh, wanting to build their business or just a way to, for you to network. Of course, you know, you go in yeah. and you give them your business card and if they need anything with regard to photography, you know, you're there. But also how you can contribute to their success, how you can contribute to building their business or helping them to um, build that that branding, so to speak. Uh, so with uh, with Daniel Grove Photography, you've, you're building your, your brand Mm -hmm. uh, I I see it. I see I see that you're, you know, you're online. It's getting. Uh, I'm seeing you almost everywhere now. Like uh, I see you <laughs> over at the uh, the camera store, which is a great place. I, I, mm -hmm. I hate going in there because then I want to buy everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons why I became a photographer is just so I could spend money on cameras. It's a fun and hobby. The, <laughs> <laughs> Expensive hobby. <laughs> and so building that brand is super important. How important do you feel it is to build that brand? 
I think it's super important to establish your brand and your presence, you know, online and in person, because the more regularly you are seen by people, uh, the more they're going to trust you as a reputable photographer or entrepreneur of any kind. Um, I forgot what the rule is. There's probably some fancy name for it, but basically like if someone sees your name seven times and it's going to stick, you know, like they're going to associate you with that service or whatever it is. Maybe that's more of an ad related marketing thing, but people see my name a lot and they connect me with good photography. They connect me with cool photos or, you know, even good family and wedding photos. So I think it's really important to put yourself out there. And when I hear photographers that aren't posting anything per week, I'm just like, you're going down. I mean, not that sounds negative. That's not what I mean. I mean, like your presence is going down. You're not going to fail as a photographer because of that. But how recognizable is your work? How recognizable is your name? If you're not posting every week or, you know, God forbid, every month at least something. Um, people need to see your name and they need to see good stuff connected with it. I was looking at your stuff and it's clearly distinguishable from others. I'm Good. like, oh Thank my, you. That, you know, you can almost say like, oh, that's his. I've had you that. Tell. I've had that happen You know, before. doing that off camera flash or doing the, uh, just the creative look. I'm like, oh yeah, that's his. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you came, if somebody came around and put something as, you know, in, like an imposter, uh, we could <laughs> easily tell that that is not Daniel Grove. Yeah. Thank you. Well, um, when, when I bought my domain name, which is danielgrovephoto.com, I kind of, like, half of me was I didn't want it to be too long. I didn't want to get danielgrovephotography.com. It's just too long. But the other half of it was I wanted Daniel Grove Photo to become, like, a noun. Like, I wanted people to say, that's a Daniel Grove photo and recognize it. Or people want to say, I want a Daniel Grove photo. <laughs> and it's so You were focused on branding. It. You probably didn't even realize yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or maybe you did. I don't know. It's pretty interesting. But uh, that that is a good a good way to do it because uh, the shorter obviously the shorter the the URL the mm. better. But the 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 noun sounds sounds great. And, you know, I, I get a lot of photographers that come to me and they're like, "Hey, boy, I want to be a photographer, but I don't have a lot of money. Uh, I don't have the equipment. I don't have the experience. But I know I want to be a photographer." Yeah. And I'm like, "Well, you know, you have you have a, a phone. You know, <laughs> get get with a photographer, negotiate a price that's less than what they would charge a regular customer." you know, get the customer, put them together. And now you got, you know, do that 10 times. You're making some money. Mm. You know, now you have money to buy your equipment. If you want to learn from the photographer, you can just shadow them for a little bit. Now you're building your, your knowledge of, of the of photography. Yeah. And so I'd like to know how is it that you go about, and it's super important because it's a lot of times photographers, they, they're getting big, they're growing, but they don't know how to grow. So how is it that you, are you, have you been able to build a team? Have you been able to grow uh, your team as uh, as a photographer? Have you been able to network with other people to contribute more to Daniel Grove Photography? Yeah, I mean, I am a one-man show as far as what I make, but uh, I have been networking a lot with photographers in the area. I'm actually, uh, today is Thursday. On Monday, I met up with, I think, probably seven other photographers at Starbucks, and we just sat outside for like three hours, and I got sunburned. <laughs> it was worth it, but we had a great time. We were just talking about, you know, our businesses, our, our funny stories, our nightmare clients, and just tips and tricks. It was great, because we were all so different. Like, we had a world-traveling wedding photographer who lives here in town. Uh, we had, you know, someone that just shoots landscapes and buildings, and, and you know, there's me that does nerdy stuff, and, you know, kind of everything else, too. Uh, everyone was different and we all learned so much from each other and that was really awesome. Um, aside from that, I have quite a few photographers that, um, you know, range from totally new, like barely even have a camera of their own yet to better than me in some ways. But I have a lot of photographers under me that I mentor, um, and that do lessons with me, you know, somewhat regularly. I also teach classes at that camera store you mentioned, um, camera exchange here in San Antonio, awesome place. Um, so teaching classes publicly, you know, offering these one-on-one -on -one sessions just to help photographers. I don't see it as competition. Some people might say, why are you teaching someone else to use Photoshop when that's like your thing? Like that's your main power, you know? Why would you share that secret knowledge? <laughs> and yeah. uh, You know, and, and a lot of people silly. think like that too. Yeah. A lot of people think like that too, which is, mm -hmm. it's, 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 uh, it's really not the right approach. No. Helping other people is a much more, much better approach. Uh, have you considered putting together like a training program and, and, and do like a webinar to where people can log on and, and uh, you know, pay for the 
the session and you can go ahead, you know, and generate another stream of revenue through that? I haven't. That would be really cool. And I think someone did mention something similar to where basically I would offer my one-on-one classes or, you know, uh, like an hour long seminar online and someone could just purchase that video and just watch it whenever they wanted. Um, I don't know how to do that yet, (laughs) but that would be really cool. (laughs) Um, I just haven't, uh, haven't had time to really look into that yet, but not against it. (laughs) No, no. And you know, I think, uh, I want to say it's Anthony Robbins, uh, who just came out with this program that they teach you basically how to put together your own training plan and, and, and disseminate that training for training. Uh, Actually, (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Somebody to train you to do what it is that you want to do, uh, as far as training. But uh, that's definitely a great. I, it's a great way to uh, add another stream of revenue. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking out, uh, taking time out of your busy schedule, and mm-hmm. coming on the Creative Entrepreneur. I, I can't thank you enough. You are a superstar. I'm a big <laughs> fan of yours, and so I hope to see more of your photography. Thank you. And how is it that people can reach you? Yeah. So I've got a few places online that I hang out. Uh, my Facebook, you can find me uh, as Daniel Grove photography, the long name on Instagram. I got the short name there. That's Daniel Grove photo. And then on YouTube, I have a YouTube channel that teaches, you know, various techniques like there's video YouTube, to, uh, there's Photoshop tutorials and other things on there. That's just Daniel Grove photo as well. And I have my own podcast called the visionary variety podcast. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you again, and I look forward to seeing more of your stuff. Awesome. Thanks so much, Abel. Appreciate you having me on the show. There you go, guys. Remember, social media is a powerful tool. Brand yourself. And you can reach Daniel at danielgrovephoto.com. If you want more content like this, be sure to subscribe. I will see you guys next week with another episode of The Creative Entrepreneur. Thank you for listening to The Creative Entrepreneur. Please click the show notes for additional information. Want to know more? Click on the subscribe button and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter by visiting us at tcepodcast.net.